Hello YouTube, I want to thank you for joining me and today we're going to be discussing DJI's big announcement on March 1st. So guys, I'm sure you've heard the rumors ro uh, rotating around about a new Phantom, the Phantom 4. Now it's been almost a year since the Phantom 3 was released and we've all seen the significant price drops on DJI's website uh, for their 10th anniversary. And so we're hoping that DJI is going to replace the Phantom 3 with something a little bit more advanced. So I'm sure you hardcore Phantom followers have been seeing some of the uh, released images of supposed Phantom 4 prototypes or leaked images of the Phantom 4 and you guys have noticed that there are some differences in the design. Overall it looks exactly the same as this uh, in terms of the scale and the uh, outer design but there's some new things that have uh, kind of showed up on the body of it that might lead us to believe it has features like obstacle avoidance retractable landing gear and various other things and I'm going to be getting into a little bit more depth on those features in just a few minutes. So guys, I'm going to start out with uh, possible updates on the Phantom 4, what we might be looking for and what we might be wanting out of the Phantom 4. Um, in my opinion, one of the biggest things that has been going around the entire drone market now is the ability to have a drone that follows you and also has fully autonomous features. Now with the Phantom 3, um, some of those features were limited by the original DJI Go app. However, uh, there were external apps that allowed you to do a lot more. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, when they did release the Phantom 4, they released some kind of tracking watch or uh, even an optical sensor to track uh, you as a person. Um, that would be really cool to see on the new Phantom. Um, and obviously, we're all hoping for obstacle avoidance on the Phantom. Now, I think the Phantom 3's or Phantom 4's uh, biggest competition will likely be something like the unique Typhoon H of which we've seen uh, rotate around with obstacle avoidance uh, and some other really neat features. So obviously with a new model we would typically expect an improved camera quality. Now I've seen some images that are leaked images of the supposed camera that will be on the Phantom uh, 4 and it doesn't look too much different from the Phantom 3. Uh, it looks like it might have an extra arm for uh, holding the gimbal um, we're hoping that maybe there will be less issues with gimbal drift on the new Phantom 4. Um, but one of the biggest things is I've seen some leaked images of pictures that say, uh, have a picture of the Phantom gimbal and it says 6K on it. Now, um, there's some reason why, why I don't think uh, the Phantom 4 will have a 6K camera uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So another thing that the entire market has been kind of uh, going towards, and DJI has been going this in this direction as well, is a drone that you can buy and fly pretty much immediately. You, you get it out of the box, you get it updated, and you're ready to go. Now, the one limitation, and the only limitation with the Phantom and the DJI Inspire series, is that you have to provide your own mobile device for the video transmission and usage of the camera on the uh, Phantom and the Inspire. Now, we've seen some images um, released a while ago of a Phantom transmitter that supposedly looks like it has a screen in the middle and controls on the sides. Um, and again, that is very, very similar to the uh, Android system that Yannick is using in their controller uh, with the touch screen and the controls out to the sides for the drone. Um, so I would hope, you know, DJI would kind of go in that direction as well. I would like an all-in-one unit, um, but we'll see uh, what they come up with for the video. Um, there's also kind of uh, people have been looking at the images, images and kind of uh, looking and seeing, oh, you know, those kind of look like retracts. Obviously, the Phantom 4 or Phantom 3 does not have retracts on it. Basically, what retracts are are retractable landing gear that fold up to the side. Now, um, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible that it would have land, uh, retractable landing gear, but the issue is, is the DJI Inspire, uh, DJI's more professional model, has retracts already and has the 360 degree camera. Now I don't think they're going to make the Phantom have a 360 degree camera um, simply because it would defeat the purpose of the Inspire unless they're planning to do something different and improve the Inspire soon. Um, I think the Phantom 3 will stay like it has been in the past. So the last thing on the uh, list of things to expect with the Phantom 4 or speculations that have been going around is greatly improved battery life. Now, I have these images here of a battery that appears to be a Phantom 4 battery, uh, and it is much larger than the Phantom 3 battery, almost twice the size it looks like from the picture. And basically, um, just because it's twice the size doesn't necessarily mean twice the flight time, 
but I'm hoping we can get up to 40 minutes or so flight time with a Phantom 4 uh, if it does actually have an improved battery. One last thing that's been going around that I haven't quite understood and I don't think really anybody's understood is uh, this leaked uh, thing that's Phantom Tomato. Uh, I don't know uh, anything about it really. I've heard some rumors it could be related to a VR uh, headset or something that DJI is making um, or it could simply just be promotion for the new Phantom 4. I don't know. Um, you guys can see the image here. Uh, if you guys have any idea, let me know in the comments. So perhaps one of the most important things that we're going to be looking forward to or not looking forward to is the price of the Phantom 4. Now there was this image as well that shows all of the prices of the previous Phantoms um, and then it shows the quote unquote new model at $1,700 which is quite expensive uh, considering that this is supposedly a Phantom. Now if we think about it, that is very very closely priced to the unique Typhoon H at $1,800. Um, so I think they're kind of going for a competitive price point uh, with regards to the Typhoon H. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the Phantom X uh, concept video released by DJI. Um, it shows a Phantom-like concept flying around autonomously, uh, responding to motion controls with the hands. Now I don't think we're going to be quite at that level with the Phantom 4 yet, um, but those uh, we're hoping to see some kind of movement towards that direction. Um, and if you think about it, uh, DJI, you know, released in that video uh, Phantom tracking a biker, and what was whole, what was uh, Unique's whole uh, demonstration video at CES? It was the Unique Typhoon H tracking a biker. So there's some similarities there that are quite interesting. So I discussed earlier the 6K camera. Um, part of the reason I don't think we're going to see a 6K camera on the uh, DJI Phantom 4 is simply because people don't have the ability to view 6K uh, at the moment. I mean, most people are still using 1080p screens. Um, even the uh, nicest iMac can sh uh, has a screen that is 5K. Um, and obviously, most people that are looking for better video are moving to 4K, not 6K. Uh, 6K requires a lot more processing, um, and it's, it's kind of I, w I wouldn't think it's uh, quite appropriate for where we are at now with this uh, prosumer market. Um, however, uh, I can definitely see that in the future when screens are improving and more people are getting 4K and higher resolution screens. That being said, 4K at 60 frames per second and maybe 1080 at 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second uh, would be really cool to see. Um, that would make for some really awesome slow motion action shots. Uh, shot with the fan. So I'm hoping DJI uh, really resolves some of their biggest complaints uh, of the Phantom 3. Things like the arms on the Phantom 3 cracking, um, things like the gimbal drifting uh, without them doing inputs on the controls or anything like that. Um, issues like that need to be resolved and those are just some of the basics that I hope to see eradicated on the Phantom 4. Now one thing I also want to see improve in the future uh, obviously this is completely up to DJI's marketing, but the service of DJI uh, is not the best at the moment. Um, not necessarily regards to phone service, I've had good conversations with people uh, helping me out with fans and Inspires uh, in the LA office talking to them on the phone, uh, but the sending parts back to DJI waiting eight weeks to get it back and not necessarily getting everything back with it, that's kind of a disappointment. So hopefully uh, they'll improve that section of their marketing as well. So guys, uh, I hope this video has uh, given you guys some ideas to think about with regards to uh, what's gonna be uh, kind of incorporated with the Phantom 4. Um, or this video could be completely useless, I wasted my time and nothing, and DJI is gonna announce something completely different on March 1st. I don't know, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and thanks for watching.